flask. Oh, and there's you as well. Yeah. <laughs> and my butties and a bag of crisps. Absolutely glorious weather. Um, although I am not going to let myself be conned into one of those false springs, but you, you make hay while the sun shines, don't you? So, today's aim is to plant some bulbs, whether they're flowers or edible bulbs like garlic and onion sets. Um, the flowers are going to be going next to the pond, which we're calling our wildlife area, where we're planting things that just attracts insects, basically. So I've got um, acid down for us, 30 of those. I've got some Sparaxis Harlequin flowers. Uh, how many of them? 20. All of these are summer flowering, so they can be planted now at this time of year. Some Trigridias, 20 of those mixed. They're quite nice, aren't they? What else? What else? And then three Festalis is means. You can we plant them now, and again, they're summer flowering. So then, edibles, got a lot of edibles, let's move those out of the way. 75 onion sets, Stuttgart a reason. <coughs> three bulbs of garlic Casablanca, another three bulbs garlic Casablanca. And here we've got um, 500 grams of stew on onion sets. Lord knows how many sets that's going to be. So about 100 perhaps. And we've also got slightly less, 250 grams of red carmine onion sets. So they're the edibles, the bulbs that I'm going to plant today while the weather's good and they can actually work the soil. We've had an awful lot of rain for weeks now. Um, but luckily things have started to dry out and I can actually work on my soil. Some other work I want to do while I'm up here today is sort out my brassicas. Those that have uh, started to bolt and produce flowers, obviously they're, they've gone now so they can just get pulled up. Might salvage the odd leaf off them perhaps but I'll see if it's worth bothering. And then over here we've got purple sprouting broccoli that needs harvesting. We've also got another patch in one of the raised beds. And then I might think about giving our Claire a headache by harvesting some rhubarb. Um, it's ready to be harvested already. Look at that. There's quite a lot of decent sized stalks in there. So I might harvest some rhubarb, we'll see. I'm also making a decision on the kale, it's started to go to flower, you see. So I'll pull them all up, salvage what leaves I can, get one final harvest from them. Um, but their, their time is up now. But my word, have they been fantastic for us. Prolific is an understatement. We've had so much kale from these plants. And if, if you've seen some of the videos I've made on my food preservation playlist, um, it's really, really easy to dehydrate. We've been putting it in all manner of soups. It's really easy to freeze. And also the chickens like a bit of it too, if you keep chickens. So, time to go. I remember I once saw an interview with um, the chef Gordon Ramsay. And he was saying, it was about, he was talking about growing your own food and he was saying one of his memories from when he was younger that no matter how little money he had, he always had food from the kale patch at the bottom of the garden. And he'd go out there in all weathers through the winter and uh, pick some kale and at least he always had something to eat. It really is a very hardy plant. It would cope with most of what the UK winter can throw at it um, and it just keeps on giving. It's been absolutely fantastic the amount we've harvested off, off these plants this year. It stores really well. 
we dehydrate it, we can freeze it. Um, some people put it in smoothies. Not quite our cup of tea. We've never used it in a smoothie. It's, you know, I think I need to get over that all. Oh, it's a vegetable, you can't have it with fruit. Well, you can, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just something I've, we've never tried. So here's the purple sprouting broccoli. Unlike the kale, I've left the plants in place because I reckon that we'll get at least another harvest off the purple sprouting broccoli. Whereas the kale had already started to produce flowers and start to go to seed, the purple sprouting broccoli hasn't done that yet, so I've left those plants in place. And roughly, I'd say there's about two or three pounds in weight of purple sprouting broccoli there. So quite a decent little harvest. Claire likes this, um, yeah. Seems to get earlier every year. It's surprising because I haven't forced this rhubarb in any way. Um, and look at it already. So here starts the mad crazy rhubarb harvest. We have about five or six months a year. No, not that actually. So it's more like four, four months a year where we literally, um, we get more rhubarb than we know what to do with. <laughs> but we're not complaining. That's why we have an allotment. But my word, it seems as soon as you've picked it, and blinked it's all grown back and ready to be picked again so I suppose a little tip um, if you're gonna start growing your own food just for pure satisfaction for your bang to buck ratio get one or two rhubarb plants and you, you'll soon be amazed how much food you can produce yourself right let's get picking unfortunately I don't know how old our rhubarb plants are and I also don't know what variety they are they were already on the plot when we took over the allotment plot, inherited them from the previous owner. If anyone's got any tips for growing good rhubarb, please feel free to share them for, so others can learn from them. Leave it in a comment underneath. I'd say pretty much the most I do is I try and keep it weed free and in the winter I give it a really good thick mulch of manure and that is about it. In the summer months, when the weather's a bit more settled than it is at the moment, I normally keep these rhubarb leaves and spread them on ground to act as a weed barrier mulch. But at the moment, if I was to just leave them on the ground, I haven't got enough house bricks to wave them all down and the wind would just destroy them. They wouldn't last two minutes. So on this occasion, I'm composting them. If, like me, you use a knife to cut the leaves off, be really careful to know where your other hand is. Right, I've only taken from this first strip here. There's about one, two, three, four, five crowns in that bit. I haven't touched the rest. And look already. Hang on, big shadow. Look how ready. How much I've got. So I'm going to have to stop there. <laughs> We've still got a freezer full of food with all the things we made at Christmas. We'll get an enormous crumble out of that perhaps. Get it into many portions and get them frozen. Wow, rhubarb, rhubarb. So I've done a bit of weeding and now I'm gonna plant the bulbs. So the taller ones are at the back and as they come this way towards the path, it gets more. Uh, so these are I see damper is that's what they look like. You can see that. Point your side up. Three inches deep, one inch apart. Oh, that's good. You really cram these in. Right, you know what? I'm just going to loosen the soil just a little bit. Grabbing and digging each individual bulb in and pushing into the new soil. Right, that was 
well, nice and loose. Have you planted any summer flowering bulbs yet? Leave a comment, let me know if you have. One in a tree piece. Right, you get the gist. I've got loads more to do. You don't need to watch into every single one. All the flower bulbs are in now. So, in in that back corner and see that little stone there they come round in an L shape I've got 30 acidanthras and then roughly one, two around there somewhere I've, I had three single Festalis Ismini bulbs they've gone in on their own they should stand nice and proud um, in fact that's what they look like so they'll, they'll stick out and they will look nice and then right what's next so from roughly there in that strip there i've got 20 um tigridias and then down here um the spring bulbs a few spring bulbs down here in this empty set i've got um is it 20 or 30 spur axis and that's that's what they look like harlequin flowers so between the spring bulbs the herbs that I've got scattered in here, the artichoke, that kind of thing, there's a looping over there, um, curry plant, there's all sorts of stuff. Between all that, it should extend the interest for this bed throughout more of the year, and especially in the summer now. Um, it, it's, it's, yeah, it look good. Can't wait. So although I've, I've not actually planted any of the onion sets or garlic cloves out, what I have done is I've done a fair bit of weeding. I've planted the summer flowering bulbs out and I've got a harvest. First rhubarb harvest of the year, a full carrier bag of Tosco de Nero kale. And then I think I showed you that earlier. I'll take about one or two pounds worth of purple sprouting broccoli. So I'm going to get that home, get it sorted out. I've also got a cup of tea. We're having goulash tonight. Very nice. Yeah, so perhaps I might come up another day soon and get the uh, the garlic and the onions planted. There's still time. I'm not in a mad rush. What I will show you just before I go is these four are the elephant garlics. Do you remember last year? I think it was around about September time. I planted them with my eldest daughter, Olivia. We actually planted six. Where the two that were there have gone I have no idea I don't know what's happened to those but these four are doing great guns so I look forward very much later this year to our first harvest of elephant garlic we've never grown it before so I'll keep you posted on that see how it gets on right what a gorgeous day it's been today oh look you can see the moon you see the moon Right, if you're a flat earth theorist, please don't give me grief about this, it's a gardening channel. I believe that that is the moon, and that the moon is round, and that we are also round. If you don't agree, just don't agree, just don't give me grief about it. Some people might like to see that. I know I've, I like seeing the moon. Right then. Right, so all of you, petal heads and flat earthers, thank you very, very much for watching. I'll see you later. And so begins the great rhubarb harvest of 2020. Bring it on.